Chamberlain's Ford is one of my favourite freedom camps and I love staying here. Chamberlain's Ford is owned by Selwyn Council and you can camp here for free in recreational vehicles such as caravans or vans or you can stay in tents. Selwyn Council does not require you to have a certified self-contained vehicle to stay in this park which means you are allowed to stay in tents here. Because certified self-contained is not a requirement, you can also use your solar shower outside here, but do ensure you do this away from the river so that soap doesn't wash into the river. The council has provided flushing toilets at this park, so these are not the long drops that you see at some of the freedom camps. These are proper flushing water toilets and there are water taps in each cubicle to wash your hands with. Selwyn Council also allows freedom camping at the nearby Coes Forward Freedom Camp, so that's an alternative if this park's completely full when you arrive. Over Christmas it can get very crowded here. It's close to Christchurch, it has flushing toilets and there's no requirement to be certified self-contained, so all of that means that a lot of people come to this park to stay. This freedom camp is 33 kilometres from Christchurch in the Canterbury region of the South Island of New Zealand. The maximum duration that you're allowed to stay in this camp is 28 days, so that's a maximum stay of 4 weeks, and then you have to pack up and move on after 4 weeks. This is another reason it gets so crowded, because people can stay here for a couple of weeks, unlike some freedom camps where people have to move on after 3 nights. Please note that you're only allowed to camp during the summer season and the last day allowed for camping is at the end of the Easter holidays in autumn. Easter Sunday this year in 2024 is 31st of March, so that's the last time that you're allowed to stay here and after that it will close. After 31st of March, the Freedom Camp will be closed all winter, but people are still allowed to use the park for exercise and walking their dogs, but you just can't camp there. The council puts barriers up to protect the grass and to stop people trying to camp over winter. I stayed at this camp in January 2023, which is summer in New Zealand, and it was very crowded over the public holidays. Two outdoor kitchen sinks have been supplied with cold water taps so you can wash your dishes or fill up your drinking water container there. The kitchen sinks are located outside the toilets. One of the kitchen sinks is a single, and on the other side there are two kitchen sinks so people can wash dishes at the same time. As you'll see all over the signs, this water is not treated, which means you need to bring your own water sterilisation tablets. You can buy water purification tablets to drop into your drinking water, and also make sure that you drop a purification tablet into the dish water so that you're cleaning your dishes in sterilised water. Aside from the water taps located on these kitchen sinks, you'll also find two cold water taps located in the camping area so you can fill up your caravan water tank directly from those. One of the water taps has a native New Zealand hebe bush next to it. The other water tap has a native New Zealand toy toy bush next to it, which is the fluffy looking bush in the background. Some of the summer days here were very hot, but the council has done a great job planting many native trees and shrubs around that provide excellent shade for campers, and the trees also block the wind. Rubbish and recycling is available. There are many of these large rubbish skips where you can throw your rubbish. Just make sure that you don't park your RV or pitch your tent in front of these um, skips as the rubbish truck does come along every week to empty these. So just make sure that you don't block his access. As with all freedom camps, you can't light fires. There's one barbecue supplied at this campsite that you can use, but I do strongly recommend bringing your own camping gas cooker as it's highly likely that someone else will be using this barbecue during the summer months. I do all of my cooking in my caravan. While this is a freedom camp, the council greatly appreciates a gold coin donation as it helps them to maintain this park and the toilets, water taps and barbecue area. 
A gold coin donation means either a $1 or a $2 coin, and that's for every night that you stay at this camp. Please don't forget to pay your donation as the council has made a big effort to maintain this freedom camp for families to enjoy their summer holidays. Many regions in New Zealand have shut down their freedom camps as the cost the government is paying is so much, so please don't be a bludger. Do the right thing and pay your gold coin donation if you do stay here. You are allowed to bring dogs to this park, but it's a good idea to keep dogs on a leash to protect others. If you choose to camp near the bridge, just be aware that the traffic might be a little bit noisy at night time, so I personally camped away from the bridge. As with all campsites in New Zealand, no noise is permitted after 10pm. These campsites are for families and the children need their sleep after 10pm. If you do hear people partying and drinking after 10pm, then do call the police as that's antisocial behaviour in a public park, which is illegal. The park was mostly quiet after 10pm, but I did have some problems with a group of rude young German tourists who were standing outside the caravans making a lot of noise at 11pm. I spoke to them about it and they were rude and stupid and self-entitled, but they did eventually leave. If you are a rude tourist who breaks the rules and you're thinking of coming to New Zealand, please just don't come here because you're ruining the summer holidays for everyone and we just don't want you here in our freedom camps. If you see people littering, you can report that to Selwyn Council using the 0800 Selwyn phone number during work hours. Take a photo of the number plate of the person who's littering as they will need that. Regarding cell phone reception and internet speed, there's actually a tower right outside this park, but the signal varies a little bit. It was okay most of the time, but there were occasions when the signal cut out for several hours. I took some screenshots showing the internet speeds I picked up using my wireless nation modem. If you need a supermarket, you'll find supermarkets in Leeston, Lincoln, and Rolleston. I always went to Leeston because Lincoln has no dump station and Rolleston's dump station has closed down. Leeston is only 10 kilometers away and I was able to use the dump station there as well as the supermarket. They also have cafes and a library, which I sometimes visited on rainy days as the rain can be a little bit annoying on my caravan roof. The Leeston dump station is on Station Road and you can offload your grey water and toilet cassette there. So let's talk about crime and homelessness. There was one very suspicious looking rough man with missing teeth who approached my caravan and said he wanted to look around my caravan as his caravan had a broken water pump and he wanted to look at mine. Criminals use all sorts of excuses to gain entry into people's houses and caravans and that was probably the craziest excuse I've heard yet. I told him no and he walked back to his beaten up old car in a huff but I didn't see him again so luckily that was the end of that and I did report it to the council and they did take that seriously. Regarding homelessness, homelessness got out of control in New Zealand during the COVID lockdowns because Jacinda locked down the country for two years which destroyed the economy and a lot of people lost their jobs. I saw about five different RVs parked here where people were clearly living in the park. I stayed here the full 28 day maximum limit over summer and the people in those RVs were definitely living in the park. I never saw people living in parks like this before Jacinda was in power so this is all new in New Zealand. Thankfully New Zealand has recently elected a new government and they're working to rebuild the country and create jobs again so I really hope that things will improve for these people so that they can get back on their feet. 
It does make me really sad to see all the lives that were ruined, and I hope New Zealand gets better and that these people can find homes again. Have a wonderful holiday. Bye.